Hello everyone, today's video is going to be about my experience as a Long Beach State student. So someone was recently asking me about my experience, if I lived in the dorms, all that kind of stuff. So I thought, why not make this video and share it with you guys because I remember when I was a senior in high school and I was transitioning to college, I had no idea what I was doing. So I hope this video can answer questions if you come across the video or if you just want to know about my experience then I would love to share because I am. I am graduating this year. I'm very excited. Um, I'm graduating a semester early. Some people keep asking how. I don't know how. I think it's just because of the way the CSU system is set up. So you have to have 120 units to get a bachelor's degree and that includes your GEs, which is your general education and your major courses um, and any electives. Um, so I just happened to finish my 120 by, I'll be finishing my 120 by this December. So um, then I'll have my degree. So let's first start off with why I chose CSULB. Um, the reason I chose Long Beach State is because, first of all, the location. Um, I had no idea Long Beach was where it was. Um, being from Huntington Beach, I never saw Long Beach State, so the first time I ever went to go see it, I was shocked. I never knew that that big of a campus um, was in the middle of Long Beach. Um, so first of all, I fell in love with the location, and second of all, it's close to home, so um, that was a plus. I never was the type to want to go out of state um, and go to a college far away, so I just loved the fact that it was really close. Also, when I went there, um, I went on a tour with a campus tour guide, and I just felt like I could see myself going there. I could see myself fitting in and just, you know, it seemed like somewhere where I would want to spend the rest of my school time, which would be four years. So I fell in love on the tour and I knew this is it and I just now go there for four years. <laughs> um, but I also was choosing between Northridge um, and Long Beach State because I did go into Long Beach as um, an American Sign Language major and I did change it so I went in as an American Sign Language major so that's why I was choosing between Northridge and Long Beach because Northridge has an amazing program but when I went to Northridge I didn't feel like I could see myself there for the next four years so I just knew that Long Beach was, had all these amazing qualities that were marked off my list so or my checklist so I just knew that Long Beach was for me and I love that I chose the school and I'm glad that I'm finishing strong three years with my degree um, so that's why I chose Long Beach State not because I knew someone that went there or that I met anyone I mean, I talked to people at the, on the tour and they were so nice, the people in the office, and that's just why I chose it. But my advice for people who are choosing their schools are that you need to go visit the campus if you can. Um, it's such a significant part of choosing why you want to go to the school because some students go and they just they can't see themselves going there, which is what happened to me. That's why I think it's really important to go visit the school if you can. So now let's talk about admissions and financial aid. So financial aid you need to apply for. Please, please, please apply for financial aid, whether you think you're gonna get something or nothing, um, because you never know what you'll need and what you're gonna use. So financial aid goes based off of one, your pay, and second of all, your parents pay if you're living with them. So I got grants and loans uh, my first year. I accepted all. Um, and so when you fill out the FAFSA application, um, you will put all of your tax information in. If you've worked, you'll put all your parents' tax information in at around 
if you're going to the fall in the fall school starts in august uh they send you your package around july i believe and you get to review it and choose what you want to take and what you don't so you can decline stuff who would decline free money so always accept grants but you don't have to accept the loans and fun fact with fafsa is with the loans if you accept 2000 of it and say you still have a grand left of it uh two months down and you're like well i'm not going to use this you can send it back and just pay it off um or you can always change it so i think if you decline it you can go back and accept it but don't hold me to that i just think that's a possibility admissions so admissions um i can give a brief little overview of our admission requirements for long beach state some of you may be asking how the heck would she know? Only is this information <laughs> online, but I worked in an office where I answered phones and I was an outreach assistant. So what I did, and I'll go into this a little later, but I um, answered phones for people who wanted to know the um, requirements to get in as freshmen and transfer students. So that's how I know this information. I don't work there anymore, so I may be a little rusty on my information, but just always check the website with up to date info. So first to start off with freshman admission, um, you come out of high school and we look at your GPA and your test scores. So what we do is we call it a eligibility index. So it's practically like a pool of numbers that we go by for each student. So when you get out of high school, you get your GPA and your diploma and that number we multiply times 800. So say your GPA is a 3.5 we will do 3.5 times 800, so multiply that. Then your SAT reading and math score, you add that up and add that to the number of the GPA. So that whole number is what we go by. Um, um, for an in-state student is 3,200, um, and out of state is 3,570. STEM majors, so science, technology, engineering, and math majors are 3,300. Um, so that's the whole number as a minimum. So we always encourage students to aim higher because you are competing with students who have maybe higher scores, maybe lower. So just aim for your best. I took the ACT twice. So if you take the ACT, you're gonna convert it online as SAT score and add those numbers up and then you'll have your overall number for our school but for the ACT and SAT you can take whichever one you want we accept both I personally was late to the game so I didn't really know what I was doing so I took the ACT two times because someone encouraged me to take it two times because they said the second time you take it you might do better not the case for me I took it two times the first time I believe I got like a 20 a 25 and the second time I got a 23 but that's okay because <laughs> look at me now I got a 25 and a 23 and that was just my scores I'm not too sure what's good what's bad I mean just try your best and I always think encourage students to apply for whatever school they want I mean obviously if it's out of reach then but just apply for what you can because you'll know whether you get in or not I applied to Northridge Long Beach Fullerton I just I think I applied to three um, and I got into all three but then that gives you the option to you know narrow down your options or if you don't get into one that you want then you have a backup route a lot of students who who Long Beach State was their backup school and they weren't like too excited but now that they go to the school they're like I'm so happy I chose this college so that's pretty cool. Transfer students you will need 60 transferable units so those have to consist of your GE so your general education and you also have your to have your golden four GEs done with a grade C or higher so that's your critical thinking oral communication written communication and math those all have to be done with a C or better also you have to have your major specific requirements done so that is your 
for example, say you're an engineering major, you'll have to go on our website, type in major specific requirements, and click engineering. When you click on it, it will show you courses that you have to take before you can get accepted into our school or even considered. Those courses are to prep you for what you're gonna take when you come to our school. So that's why the school is big on making sure you have those done. That's just a brief overview, a little bit of what you need for both. So now let's talk about my experience at Long Beach State. My experience at Long Beach State has been great. I have met so many amazing people, whether it be from my classes or from my abroad experience, from work. I have just, I think I've had an amazing experience and I love you know, meeting new people every single day and it's just been overall great. My major is communication studies and a minor in American Sign Language and Deaf Cultures and I will have a certification in mediation as well. Let me break down what has made my experience great at my school. So let's first start off with my first year of college. My first year of college, I did live in the residence halls. I lived in Parkside. So for those of you looking at the different options at Long Beach State, we have three. We have Beachside, Parkside, and Hillside. Uh, Beachside is off campus. It's a mile off campus, but we provide shuttles for the students to go back and forth. Hillside is on campus and Parkside is on campus as well. Parkside is only freshmen and Hillside is a mix and Beachside is a mix. I lived in Parkside. Uh, I absolutely loved it. I met amazing people. I had the option of taking night classes. So since I was on campus, I could just go to classes from the residence halls. Uh, I also had the option of going to the gym frequently. I went to events that the residence halls hosted. All that kind of good stuff um, was really fun for my first year. I know I only live about 20 minutes at most away from my college, which I'm grateful for, but I wanted to live my first year in the residence halls. I wanted to get out. I figured it was the best opportunity to go and go to school and just, you know, have that college experience. So that's what I did. Um, I'm back home now, but living in the dorms was really fun. And yeah. For the dorms, I chose the 19 meal plan, so with bonus money. So what that means is I had 19 meals in one week. I'm pretty sure that's three a day and two on the weekends. So at the residence halls, the dining halls only do like brunch, breakfast, lunch, and then dinner. So you only can go two times on the weekends. So I had a meal every single day. Some students do the lower ones just because it depends on how much you want to spend. Are like 10 a week, I believe. The 10 meal a week just gives you the option to kind of choose when you want to go because some students don't eat breakfast, some students don't eat lunch. So it really just depends. You can have a fridge, a microwave, and that's it in your residence halls. From what I've been hearing recently from students is the school has provided that in every single dorm now, but that wasn't the case for me, so we had to bring our own. But that's really cool because now our school is providing that for the students, if what I'm hearing is correct. So you have that option and you can have microwavable foods. I know some students had a rice cooker and they cooked meals out of there, so you could do that too. Um, you can get creative if you don't like the food. I personally didn't have a problem with it. Parkside has the best pizza and cookies. If you know, you know. And Hillside, each residence hall has its different um, pros and cons. Living in the dorms was awesome. It was a little pricey for me, particularly. I think we are one of the most affordable CSUs, so it wasn't that expensive, but for what we got, I would say it was, but that's just my opinion. So that was my experience living in the dorms. I hope that was enough information. Um, let's talk about my job. So my first year in the spring, I 
on my FAFSA application, I put work study. So what that is, is it's a job on campus that practically comes in your financial aid package and you can only work up to that amount they put in your package. So for example, if you get $2,400, you can only make up to $2,400 that year by your employer. So I got a job at Outreach and School Relations that was me answering the phones and me preparing packages, um, all kinds of things. So for example, when you're in high school and someone comes to your sc uh, school and represents Long Beach State, that was my office doing that. I didn't do that particularly, but we had advisors who did that and they did an amazing job. So we would prepare, prepare packages for them to take to students. So that's the kind of stuff I did. That was a work study job. How I found that job, they have work study fairs that you can go to and these, they set up tables and you can meet people. That's where I met my amazing manager. And so I started there. I started there my freshman year spring and I just had quit right before I left for abroad. So eventually outreach had turned into tours as well. So we combined the assistants and the tour guides into one. So I became a campus tour guide. So I was, yes, that person standing up with a hundred people in front of them screaming, this is the engineering building. Um, that was me. I love that job. It's definitely why my experience at Long Beach State was so good because I learned so much about the university that no one would know. For example, a lot of people probably don't know, we have a shark lab on campus. Yes, we have sharks. Um, they're not huge, but Little facts like that, I know that some people wouldn't just because no one's gonna look up random facts about the school, but on the tours, we would give that kind of information because we're trying to sell and promote the school. We're trying to get students to understand why they like our school, why they come. I, I absolutely love that job. I remember some people would tell me, I chose this school because my son was on your tour and he loved it. So just little things like that um, make me and the tour guides love having an impact on our students that we are helping. I have met some of the most amazing people in that job. Shout out to you, Denise, she's probably watching this. Um, so some of the people I've met are amazing. We're probably gonna be lifelong friends. Also, Denise is my birthday twin. We have the same birthday. Um, so yeah. We also would help students, middle school and elementary students, we would give them tours on the weekend. So we would show them why you should go to college, what college is, um, and that kind of stuff. So I loved doing that and promoting our school and promoting education to these students. It was awesome. I also had the opportunity to do a student panel for transfer students. So people who are typically older, my age or older, who are transferring in from other colleges, we would um, go on stage uh, in a room of like 200 people and we would answer questions about our experiences, questions about the school, anything like that, which was awesome to share my experience to that. Now I'm going to share my experience abroad. So that would probably take a very long time if I was going to give you a detailed experience, which I can do a different video if you want me to. Let me know if you want me to, but this is just gonna be a short overview of my experience abroad. So I went abroad my junior year. Um, just to let you guys know, college goes by so it depends on how many units you have. If you have, I don't know exactly the numbers, but if you have like 60, I think you're a junior, you're upper class, it doesn't go by years. So you could be in college for four years and still be a sophomore. It just depends. So right now, technically this is my third year of college and I'm graduating, but I am a senior because I'm at 94 plus units. So that's just a quick little thing. Um, but my abroad experience was so amazing. I was in Florence, Italy for three months from September to December. And I chose to go with my best friend, Coral. We randomly decided, you know, we both wanted to do it really bad, but we didn't know where we wanted to go. So we went into the office and Florence, Italy was 
right there in our face and we knew someone who was in charge of the program and she told us all about her experience and she practically sold us on it. Shout out to Coral Gadgetano. So she sold us on that experience and you know, what also really sold us on this experience was that we had the opportunity of doing an internship. So with the Florence Italy abroad semester, you get to do an internship with an Italian company um, of 120 hours. So we took three classes, I think, three classes or four. My, I have the worst memory, four or three, but one of those was Italian, two were other ones, and then we had the internship. I also took an online course that was going on here while I was there because I wanted to stay um, up to date and make sure I was getting my stuff done. So my internship personally was I was answering TripAdvisor reviews, Google reviews, and making Facebook posts for these two companies I was working for. And I would post for tourists who were coming to Italy as a tourist, pretty much, um, because I knew what I was doing, I was posting to what they would like kind of situation. So that was awesome. Uh, I was lucky. Mine was from the apartment, so we did live in apartments, not on a university. And so we were literally living like Italians. Most people who go abroad go and stay in the dorms of another school, but we stayed in apartments with an Italian landlord and all that kind of stuff. So my internship was from home on my laptop. I had other friends who worked at schools as teacher assistants helping with English. Some of my friends went to cooking classes. They got to help with tours that came and took t cooking classes. They were the assistants there. Um, some people got to do fashion. There were all kinds of internships. So that was part of the odd trip that we loved. I also got to travel so much. I went to so many different countries. For my 21st birthday, I went to Egypt with my boyfriend. I also went to Greece. We went to Amalfi Coast, a bunch of different trips we got to go on. I was very, very, very fortunate. Everyone's abroad experience is so different just because of what, you know, your own views, your own whatever it may be, perspective, what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and mine was different because my significant other was there. So when I chose to go abroad with Coral in like, I don't even know when it was, when I, ch I think it was in the spring, we chose we were gonna go, and at the time, my significant other and I were just lettering because we couldn't talk on the phone, and I was like, Coral, we're gonna go to Florence. She's like, okay, we're going. So we literally just decided on it, and then I got a phone call from Larson, my boyfriend, about two weeks later, I don't even know, and he was telling me that he was stationed in Italy, which was crazy. Um, if you don't call that fate, I don't know what it's called fate. But, um, so he was stationed in Italy. We knew that was an option for him, but um, obviously you don't get to just pick where you wanna go in the army when you just joined. So he was stationed in Italy. So we both got to experience a little bit together, which was incredible. I got to, you know, experience school with my friends, but I also had the option to um, travel with him and that was amazing. So my abroad experience was a little different that way as um, he was there and I got to spend time with him, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so that was a little bit about my abroad experience, but I can explain way more in a different video if you want and include some clips of my experience. So I think I answered most of the stuff that people wrote on my Instagram. Someone, two people wrote, what would you, what would be your piece of advice for an FTF? An FTF is a first time freshman. Um, my piece of advice. I think my number one piece of advice, just because of my journey this past year, also with my job that I was working, a lot of times of what I would see from specific families, my tip of advice would be to always remember that this is your life and that this is your path and your journey that you're choosing and you're um, beginning. Um, but what I mean by that is 
just to always remember to always pick where you want to go. Whether you watch this video and you don't want to go to Long Beach or you're going to somewhere else, you need to remember that these are going to be the next four years of your life and you should be able to know that you're the one that's in control of this, let's for example, your this car you're steering. Um, so choose the classes you want to take, take, get the experience that you want to get, whether that means join a sorority or be in a club or travel, go abroad, whatever it may be. Um, I think it's just important to take a hold of any opportunity you can and choose what feels right for you. My first two years, I took 15 units each semester and had two jobs. So I that was just what I wanted to do and I loved it and here I am now with just one job. I'm a barista and taking 15 to 19 units. And so I think everyone's different and you should just remember to take what you want and your advisors may suggest for you to take these certain courses, but remember that you're in charge of your college career. And yeah, also if you change your major, don't feel bad and don't feel ashamed of changing your major halfway through. I mean, obviously if you've taken a lot of classes for that major that might be a little difficult but you can always change people change every single day i'm growing every single day and you just have to remember that it's up to you so that would be my one piece of advice i believe so i hope this video answered any of your questions that you have if you have any other questions for me and you don't know me or you know me, you can comment on this video and ask. I'd love to answer. But it was so much fun sharing my a little bit about my experience at CSULB. I've grown so much. I have learned so much about myself and I still am learning every single day about myself and my journey. And um, I hope you guys like this video.